TCS Innovation Forum is hosted by TCS Co-Innovation Network and chaired by TCS CTO K. Anand Krishnan. It provides a platform to collaborate and innovate with technology researchers and peers across industries through panel discussions and interactive sessions. Continuous evolution is a key contributor to complexity and IT plans evolve to accommodate changes in underlying technology, new application functionality, and more stringent user and application requirements. In this session, discover how to offset the complexity of IT plans with continuous evolution. Harry Quinn now introduces the need for infrastructure simplification. If you take a step back and really look at almost all enterprises, regardless of their domain uh, and what are some of their major pain areas or wish list, if you will, from the perspective of enterprise IT infrastructure, it generally the list is very common across almost all enterprises that you want to create an environment or operate an environment that is standardized, right size, right placed. It's um, highly adaptive so that you can accommodate changes in business requirements, changes in market conditions. When you do so, you want to do, do it uh, very rapidly, so keep make the environment very agile. Um, make the environment very transparent so that you have very good understanding of how a business process is composed of a large number of application, application to infrastructure, and then how the cost, uh, reliability, availability sort of connects back and forth from uh, infrastructure all the way to uh, the business processes and so on and achieve all of these objectives while ensuring that the environment is highly efficient with respect to cost, with respect to carbon footprint, and so on. But unfortunately, the reality is somewhat different, right? If you look at what is actually going on for most enterprises, you see that the environments have become extremely large, complex, highly heterogeneous, right? Underlying technology has been constantly changing, user expectations and requirements have, have been changing, and so on. How do we essentially bridge the gap between where we are and where we want to go? And that's sort of the theme for this panel. I have actually had the pleasure of, or the pain of actually working with many of you to understand what are the challenges in actually transforming your enterprise IT. Um, and what the key message that kept coming up time and time again was that while there are so many different transformation technologies that are available, actually embarking on and executing a simplification and transformation program is enormously complicated. Um, so when we started digging into a little bit of detail as to why is that the case, we came across two fundamental reasons. The first one is the spaghetti mess diagram that I showed you, which is that most enterprises have become so large and complex uh, that we don't understand what we are de dealing with. And when you introduce something somewhere, something else somewhere else breaks, right? And it's very difficult to actually correlate the cause and the effect. Because of this, it's all, all enterprises are extreme, extremely reluctant to introduce any change in their environment. So that's problem number one, which makes it very difficult to actually do what you want to do while you obviously have very good objectives. The second thing that we encountered was that um, while, while there are many technologies that are available, there are also many implementations of the same technology uh, that are available. And each of these implementations have constraints about when they can be applied, as well as costs, benefits, risks, and side effects. Now, unfortunately, what happens today is that Deriving and executing a transformation plan is a very difficult and today a very manual intuition centric exercise where we actually spend a large amount of time and effort understanding the current state and then determining what to do. Unfortunately, this entire exercise takes too long. It takes months to actually do. And by the time you have derived a strategy, something has already changed. So your strategy is no longer actually solving the problem that you started solving. Rely extensively on data that we can collect from the environment. Build models of exactly what is going on. So basically bring a level of transparency that allows you to understand what is going on within your enterprise IT and use that understanding to automate the process of actually deriving the target stage. So what we have done at TCS ha ha is that we've actually built a suite of um,
tools, uh, as well as an end-to-end -end workbench that actually allows us to take a very systematic, uh, very data-driven and analytics-led approach, much like uh, what Mark, what you talked about, but solving different class of problems, uh, where we start by actually very uh, standardizing how we collect data, so all the standard templates, uh, and as well as tools that actually fill in these templates with the right amount of data from your operational environment. And iTransform, which is a planning tool that Doug mentioned, is essentially trying to automate the process of determining what to do, when to do, why to do. So from choosing the right set of technologies to sizing the environment to uh, identify uh, uh, a schedule for migration, so he talked about move groups. Mr. Sanjit Biswas talks about the technology for overcoming problems in transformation. The theme for us is really about networks. I think that's a, a small piece of the much bigger IT picture that all of you are managing here. Uh, but really we're focused on that piece because it's becoming vitally important. All these applications moving to the cloud, all these devices entering the network, uh, they all rely on having a rock-solid network connectivity, uh, and that's what we're focused on. So our technology is really designed for ease of management and ease of deployment. If you rewind 15 years, the network was pretty well understood. You were connecting a bunch of servers and a few desktops. You had some policies you wanted to enforce, and you were able to design the network uh, in advance for those needs. What we're finding these days is, uh, I see lots of iPads out there, you're seeing new devices entering the network, uh, you're seeing different applications being deployed, and so management is ending up uh, to be a vitally important problem because you need to do different things with your network. So what we focused on doing is making networks easy to deploy, con configure, control, manage, and so on. And we do this from the cloud. So as I mentioned, you have the access points, you just plug them in into a switch, they connect to the internet, and then our cloud controller does the rest. And this is the same whether it's at headquarters or branch office or warehouse, uh, it doesn't matter. And uh, what's interesting about this architecture is that it's simple, uh, but you're not giving up anything in terms of performance, so there's no bottlenecks anywhere. That our architecture lends itself to different customer use cases in different ways. So some people like ease of use, some people like the agility, some people just like that they don't need RF training, anyone on their IT staff can manage the network. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, with new architectures, you can actually start to do new things. Um, so the way our access point work, without going into too much detail, is there's actually a fair bit of intelligence in the AP, and then all the statistics are aggregated and managed in the cloud. And we can start to do really interesting things with that. So this, is, this forum is all about innovation, and uh, I'd be happy to talk to any of you after this uh, about how this architecture works, but you can start to do new things when t once you start to eliminate complexity down the network level and start to think about it as a system. And, uh, and then finally, uh, what's been really fascinating for us as a small company, it's always a challenge to try to get that initial bit of traction. We've been very fortunate. I think the market has adopted our products really well. Mark Jeff focuses on the challenges faced due to increasing complexity to systems. My opinion here that I'll impart with you is that as we simplify things like the provisioning of new applications, the new systems, which has been sort of a lot of what we've been really focused on the last couple of years, I believe what we've done is added complexity to the management of those services. Load balancing, virtualization, the ability to deploy new services without right, additional hardware, to let the environment resiliently take on the load. All extremely valuable in increasing our agility, um, but the management of those applications has become extremely, and those services become extremely difficult. Why? Because with that complexity becomes the obscure uh, the obscuring, if you will, of how those underlying layers of technology are operating and how they work together. And therefore, we have troubles understanding what will the impact of a change be in these environments. We have to understand the causal chain that led to the issue. And what they're doing is mining through large amounts of terabytes, potentially, of data, right, logs, performance data within a couple minute window before and after the incident, and uh, choose the right data set to start looking at and you move quickly. We suggest that if these machines can generate this data, then machines should be able to analyze this data. And so we're leveraging what we call third generation machine learning techniques, Bayesian model based. Today what we want to do is help organizations reduce downtime, reduce the duration of downtime. And we do this through the self-learning analytics that requires no rules, which is I think one of the things that was really an impetus behind the starting of this technology because our earlier products that the team had built were all rules based and stuff's too complex and too dynamic to write rules around today. You write a rule and the environment's changed. 
And so Prelear consumes all this data and generates a story, the story behind the incident. And so that's our mission, reducing the duration and frequency of, of outages. Um, I think we've got some revolutionary new approaches to solve the problem. Um, the, I think the beauty of the technology, it doesn't require any new data collection mechanisms. This is not a difficult to deploy solution. We're leveraging the data that our customers already have. We typically start by having uh, them send us some data that we can leverage offsite so we can sort of prove the value, get everyone comfortable that it's going to work, and then the system then gets deployed in real time at the customer's environment so that they can get answers to, the, to why their issues are occurring when they're occurring in their own environment without our involvement. Krishna Kumar takes us through his journey in transformation and the challenges the company needed to overcome. One of the things that we have as challenges, you know, even though we're part of a large uh, you know, infrastructure, uh, high-tech uh, you know, company, uh, our running of IT is as complex as everybody else's is how uh, we think. We have the same kinds of challenges, globalization, application explosion, uh, TCO, security, uh, acquisitions. We've, we, we've done about 50 acquisitions in the last decade or so. so that continues to be one of our uh, major uh, mechanisms of growth. Complexity of everything, aging data centers and uh, storage growth as well. So the challenges that we have are similar. A major part of what we are talking about of, as uh, simplification of our infrastructure is our uh, cloud strategy. Um, you know, so we have been building out our private cloud, which uh, we start with our own, uh, you know, internal uh, data center, which we've been virtualizing uh, not only on the OS stuff, but every every place up and down the stack. Our general model, model of how we will continue to evolve our private cloud, which is our internal data center, but then continue to go out and stretch into the public cloud, which is using mechanisms of federation and virtualization, and information virtualization as well as well as well as security. Um, briefly, our own journey to the private cloud looks like this. Uh, we spent a lot of time in what we call the IT production space uh, in, in uh, between 2004 and 2008, uh, where we were actually, uh, you know, using a virtualized platform and you know testing the platform out. Meaning, we moved a whole bunch of development, test, and IT-owned applications onto that platform. Uh, what you would see as part of the y-axis here is. Uh, percentage virtualized, and that is more around OS virtualization. We just use that as a proxy for how far we are into the uh, you know, journey to the private cloud. Um, so we spent a lot of time actually stabilizing what would be called the virtualization platform. Again, one aspect of it is the VMware-based ba uh, OS virtualization, but it, it stretches to other aspects of storage virtualization, application virtualization, and so on and so forth. Um, the next phase was more around uh, business production, where we started moving a whole bunch of mission critical applications, things which are very important to the business into the virtualized space as well. And so that's been happening over the last couple of years or so. Uh, and the important, you know, well, the challenge here is usually stabilizing the platform itself. It's mostly about the technology. The third phase, we are roughly around here, you know, as EMC IT. The third phase is IT as a service. This is something that we're just entering, where you start to run IT as a business, disaggregate many of the services that we have, uh, and provide what, what are called, you know, you've heard of the terms infrastructure as a service, platform, platform as a service, and uh, software as a service. What we found is with, as you virtualize more, you find that a single administrator, for instance, can administer storage, network, compute, and so you start to see some of those roles converging, but at the same time there are other roles that are emerging in terms of cloud architects and, 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 and cloud capacity planners, cloud, uh, you know, uh, uh, folks who, will, who can talk to the business, package up the services, and, 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 and provide them in a very agile kind of fashion as well. This is really the stack that we sort of put out. I mean, it's to say that what I talked about was percentage virtualization at the systems level, but really what we've been doing is taking the whole ecosystem into account, including security, uh, what are we doing with the clients, meaning the desktops and laptops, management and automation. This is a massive space, right? This is one of the real challenges that faces us even as we go forward. I mean. How do you get to that integrated single plane of glass? Uh, and in fact, uh, both you know, EMC and VMware produce management automation products, but it's really the integration. I mean, even though we use a lot of you know, EMC hardware as well as um, a lot of uh, you know, VMware kinds of uh, models, but we, do, uh, we are in a heterogeneous environment as well. And so there's a lot of investment that needs to be made in this space, how we bring it together. Networking, uh, backup recovery, storage systems, 
And then of course, the top part of the stack, which is sort of most important, is what are the information services that we provide and the applications themselves. So again, we look at it as one ecosystem and every step along the way has been trying to fit many initiatives and programs along, along each of those, you know, even if we use percentage uh, OS virtualization as a proxy. Doug Saucier speaks about the challenges he faced while undertaking transformation of the core technical infrastructure when moving the data center. And the innovation was in the funding side, and the innovation was deciding that we're, our data centers are going to have three components. They're going to have a virtualized storage component, they're going to have mid-range servers, and they're going to have x86 servers, and they're going to have a standard architecture across all three data centers. Two active data centers, one passive data center for DR, and a platform-based DR strategy based on virtualized storage. And this will all be accomplished in 18 months. Consolidate six data centers and the transformation in 18 months. Is that innovation or is that just taking risk? Kind of combination of both. We made a major milestone, and I'm going to ask the question of all the IT people in the, in the room. How many of you know exactly to the server IP address what is in every one of your data centers? Can anybody raise their hand and say you actually know? I do, because I had to move them. Okay? And we could not have done that without something called iTransform and a, and a bunch of work that actually allowed us to do a complete inventory and then plan our moves into six move groups. So we invested in um, what I call forensic uh, computing, which is go find out what we got and put it someplace that we had access to it, we could analyze it, we could look at all the relationships and understand that complex uh, wiring diagram that you saw up there with, a, with the help of a computer so that we could actually figure out what we could move and what we couldn't move and had, how we had to go about it and how we could simplify it. People don't really understand how hard it is to get to be a service-oriented infrastructure provider because you have to completely redo your standard operating procedures so that you can actually understand and get an activity-based cost of what that server is, service is. Infrastructure is commodity today. It is not something in which IT needs to be spending innovation money from, a, from an IT provider of a business. It's a commodity, so manage it like a commodity. You can't just turn it over to a, to a vendor. You have to architect, you have to control. And we innovated in two areas, right? We in, three areas. We innovated in the architecture because we just said, stop, we're not gonna just move what we got. We're going to take this opportunity to simplify our, our architecture. And let's try to figure out how we can put our feet on the ground from a finance standpoint so that the next three years, when the next cycle comes, we can actually not do what every IT company, I've, I, every IT de department I've ever seen does, which is keep the budget the same and just buy more capacity. because. You, your infrastructure is so complex that you can't change it all out, so you're just keeping the price the same and you're buying more capacity instead of understanding your capacity and taking advantage of Moore's Law to drive your costs down. Uh, I think we've done a very, very good job uh, at, at working together in the partnership of really helping Avery Dennison transform their, uh, what we call enterprise technology services. For any feedback and queries, do write to us. For more information, you can visit our websites.